All right, so I'm here with Jakob Fein at yep. Hello. J. Crete, and um, we're, we're longtime friends. We've known each other for quite a while. How many, how many J. Cretes have you been to? This is my first year. My second. This is my second, and in my opinion, it's like the best, the best. The best conference for me. <laughs> I pay for it myself. It's not like my employer, but I c I'll keep coming You'll more keep and coming more back. as long as I can. Nice, mm. nice. And, you know, given the way Heinz limits the attendance on this, you... It's, it's probably, you know, going to be something which is very esteemed to be able to even come here. Right. It's, it's invitation only. And I just spoke today with Heinz and he's saying that uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to grow. I said, can you do like for 150 people? It's not business. He doesn't make any money out of it. And it's yeah. very difficult to accommodate so many people and all these dinners and uh, excursions and everything. So Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a I've, I've been enjoying it so far. It's the first conference I, I've come to where the... The discussion of food started before we even got to any technical. Correct. So we had all the fancy Greek dinners laid out. Um, excursions, I think it was number two priority. True. This, we spent half day on beautiful beach, and only now we are in the rooms. And in the rooms, there is no like official speakers. I mean, I suggested the topic, wow. then I started. We're all speakers here. Right. Everybody is participating. I mean, it's everybody's qualified, and everybody has something interesting to share, and um, there's more than enough brain capital to go around. I, I want to give credit to Heinz, who was able to to bring together so many people who, and each of them technically has something to say. Yeah. He has an opinion, is not afraid, has been around, may, well, maybe some people are around like for a couple of years, but they are willing to participate, which is great. Cool. Now, one of the things I thought was really interesting was even before we came here, you sent out a link to your new kids book. Oh, Java for Kids, yeah. Yeah, your mm -hmm. kids programming book, which you're working on. And um, I, I immediately sent it to my daughter. She's mm -hmm. 11. Okay. <laughs> well, but you are doing, a, in my opinion, you are doing a great job with all these little devices that you showed for kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I never try to do Java in embedded devices, but my goal is a little bit different. Nice illustration, explain concept like, let's create a pet. What can pet do? A pet can sleep and... Uh, eat maybe can you dive yes if it's a fish this way i can even explain like polymorphism yeah yeah so you can actually teach complicated object-oriented principles but in, 12, in a way kids 12 can years and up unless yeah. you are okay. like a maverick okay. or so something. so my daughter has another six months and then she's ready well your daughter should <laughs> probably can probably do it now because given <laughs> some genes or maybe well get given a whole lot of hanging around me probably but but um, she, you have Java in your genes, right? Yeah, a probably. little bit. Yeah, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Right. I've changed my genes occasionally, but yeah. Right. This book I write <laughs> for No Starch Press, and the book is published. I mean, as I write, the publisher allowed me to pu publish drafts, so you can go and find it Java for Kids, and you can easily find it online and read whatever is there. If you have your feedback, I'll be gr uh, really appreciative. Yeah, no, I thought it, I thought it was a cool and interesting way to teach teach programming to children mm -hmm. and it, it read in a way where if I if I was a parent or I was a kid I would I wouldn't feel overwhelmed and also I can tell you that many people believe that Java is difficult and it cannot be used as a first language to learn and they use some uh, pseudo, pseudo language pseudo right? like, yeah no I've, I've been teaching a lot of courses and um, I use Java in all of them for kids like ages 9 and mm -hmm. up and um, we actually celebrate the first compilation error. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with it. That kids, but but it's it's a great form of like feedback. So rather than like trying something and then it, it goes wrong and you don't know why it's not working or you don't know why the behavior isn't what you put in there, like you type something in and if you get the syntax wrong or you make a silly mistake, um, the compiler tells you exactly what you did wrong. Right. And then you fix it and you get the results you want when you run it. So most of the kids have had a lot of success. And uh, even the first compilation error isn't that scary. If there is one language that I wouldn't recommend to use with kids, it would be JavaScript. <laughs> you can do, you can write anything in there. It'll be happy, quiet, and, and won't, it won't complain. It won't work. <laughs> it won't work, but I mean, it won't complain, but it won't work either. If you want to make sure, and, you then, and then even the adults are going to rip their hair out trying to debug it. Right. They're like, "What did these kids write?" Oh, they put a period, they missed a period where they should have done this or that, and you spend like hours trying to help kids debug their own programs. But you know, trying to teach kids using some simple or pseudo language is like, if I want 
to learn how to play guitar? Should I get a cheap, like ten dollar guitar and start learning? Maybe I won't. I will hate it. Like after my fingers yeah, will, yeah, yeah. will, no, will, will so be broken. One of the things I noticed in your book is you actually recommend you want kids to use a real IDE. Right. Really. Yeah. I I let them. I explain them how to use IntelliJ IDE, which, in my opinion, is the best IDE. Yeah. In general. No, yeah, that's a that's like a novel approach. Like there's lots of investment into like, um, uh, what's it called? Green Greenfoot. And Blue Jay and other kid-focused yes. why, why Why give something to kids that uh, they will never use yeah, in their well life? Yeah, well, it's something you outgrow very quickly, I think. And especially kids are much smarter than you think they are. Yeah. It's 12 yeah. years old. We, we underestimate our, our right. little future geeks. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. But uh, I can tell you that I'm very happy about Java. Nice. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a release that is most exciting during the, like for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Remember like Java 5 in 2004 with all these generics and concurrency collections? This was something big. After that, it was yeah, yeah, a little there, bit here there and there. A, there was a big wall there. But now with all these uh, lambdas and streams. I yeah, mean no, I use, I use lambdas in my, in my kids' classes and they, yeah. they get it. They just intuitively understand it faster than the adults. <laughs> but there is a problem when you teach Java. How do you usually teach Java? Most likely you do the same thing. Java is an object-oriented language. Everything is an object. This is how you write an object. This is how you inherit a class. And you can implement interface, and different classes can write different implementation, and this is polymorphism. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, I need to write a chapter on Lambda saying, kids or adults, forget about everything I said just now, <laughs> you don't need objects. This is how you can eliminate inheritance and lay yeah, also in yeah. hierarchy and do with well, lambdas. I, I think for kids, you just, you can skip a lot of the ceremony. Right. You can get straight to the, to the simple, simple use cases, you know, do things the simplest way possible and they won't be confused. See, but again, how difficult it was. This is a class pet. Yeah. Class, pet, curlies. Inside, pet can eat. It's not that difficult. But after that, I need to tell them, forget it. Don't no, do no, it. No, 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 no. So, pet can eat. Right. And then when the pet eats, he needs to take an action. And I'm passing the... That action. action is the lambda. Correct. So, you can add that later on. So, like now I see, Steve, that you understand <laughs> lambdas, which is good. And now you can pass it either by imp to the implementation of the method eat, mm -hmm. Or you can even create a class with a constructor that takes lambda, right? Yeah. So I create a uh, dog, yeah. which is a subclass of a pet, and I tell him how to bark or how to speak. Yeah. Passing the lambda expression. Nice. So actually passing behavior in as you create right, it. Right. Right. So every object has a lambda. Yeah. So I think you it know is possible. it's it's a natural extension, but it it does require a change in how we've been teaching people Java. Definitely. Yeah, and also, uh, I proposed a session, probably we'll have it tomorrow, yeah. practical uses for Lambda. Because, I mean, every book so far explained, this is a syntax, this is how you do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's, that's something which is missing. Right, why and you would do this. I've written a couple of blogs, if you want to go, yakofain.com. One of them, I show you how you can, uh, with Lambda, eliminate polymorphism. Mm -hmm. The other blog, I show you how you can uh, create closures in Java explaining what it is, because some people say closure is lambda, lambda yeah. which is not. I mean, you need to, they need to understand what it is. So we need more use cases. So if you guys can write some blogs showing how, how your life is better now because of lambda, not just because the syntax is cool, but why. It allows to eliminate a lot of classes, mm -hmm. definitely, in my opinion. So I like it. So I, Java feeds me, you know what, for how many years since 90? Eight, I guess. Sixteen years, and I it's hope to bad. I hope to retire with Java. It's not bad. In my hands. Yeah, a little, a little stint. My with family some, doesn't. My family doesn't script, complain. But you came back to the fold. That's it. No, <laughs> we've, we've been using Java all the time. Yeah, yeah. Flex was on the front, but Java was on the back. Exactly. Always. Yeah. Same, same here. Yeah. Now I'm looking at Java FX, which is not bad at all. Yeah. No, it is well. <laughs> It's the best desktop client oh, framework. I know available. you have to sell. You work for all. No, no, no. no I'm know. saying, I'm saying, of what's left, it's the best cross-platform desktop framework. 
Well, the, there's no why, do you, why do you use the word desktop? These days, people, it's bring your own device. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, they need to do everything. So now HTML is moving in the right direction. They have this polymer frameworks. You will be able to create components and everything. It's not production ready yet, but probably in a couple of years it will yeah, be. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the things is standards tend to move at a much slower pace. Mm -hmm. So you always end up kind of using um, one of the vendor implementations, which isn't quite standard yet. Now, have you looked at any of the um, JavaFX on devices stuff for writing an iOS and Android? No, and this is something that I'm interested in. I mean, yeah. to see that it really works. Because these days, if okay. it doesn't so work later, on iPhone... Later on, later on, I'll show you. Okay. But um, there's, there's a lot of work which was originally done as part of Oracle, which we open sourced. And while we're not commercially supporting it, there's other companies which have taken it forward, like RoboVM and the um, JavaFX Supports Initiative by Johan Voss. And maybe doing really maybe this explains. Maybe this explains that when I whenever I go to Oracle's conferences, it looks like Oracle is trying to avoid even mention, like as if we don't have mobile devices, embedded uh, this and that. But people understand. People are not stupid in the audience. The, each of them has Android or iPhone, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a policy. You're not allowed to say that JavaFX can be used on mobile no, no, devices. No, no. I mean it's it's. OpenJFX, the open source implementation, supports it. It's just, it's different than like, you know, Oracle has an official Java SE and Java EE supported distribution. We sell you support and we officially, but this, is, this is more of an open source kind of ground roots initiative. But again, based on what Oracle does in terms of PR, it seems like they are saying JavaFX is great for desktop and Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so we're also doing a lot of embedded stuff as a company. Maybe. But, but Maybe. the embedded work we're doing uses the same infrastructure, you know, it runs on EGL, has the same sort of performance optimizations you need for mobile devices. It's very similar architecturally. But it's, and then it's, that, it's, all those it's, improvements are going into um, OpenJFX. I'm sure the people are who are watching this interview, it's, for them it's like a revelation that you can do <laughs> Java effect on mobile devices. No, I'm, I, I'm not kidding. I, I think people don't know about it. Yeah, so we're, we're telling the world now. Okay. That's good. Guys, do Java effects, please, now. <laughs> Yeah, I was very pleased to see the JavaFX chapter in your kid's book. Yeah. yeah. I, see, I, I've written a book many years ago, the first version, and it was Swing. Yeah. Now, can you give me a reason for using Swing as opposed to JavaFX? There's no reason unless you want to reduce your performance and make it more difficult to do. I, I, uh, the only thing that I, I, um, Sven, uh, who yeah. Sven told me yesterday or today that accessibility is in Swing. Mm -hmm. If you need accessibility, keep Swing. But other than that, I'm not sure why. Would no, I they did a lot of accessibility improvements. I think it was either just in 8 they put it in, or it's, it's upcoming. We have a big patch upcoming. But I, I know accessibility was one of the big things on the roadmap that they either just finished or it's just going in. I can't Maybe the other thing is if people are cannot afford to switch to Java 8, maybe they shouldn't be doing Java effects. Or no, no, so I think that's one of the fallacies of um, client development is that like for server development, you, you actually, it's beneficial to sometimes stay in an older version of Java because you have a lot of existing infrastructure and performance testing and possibly depend on third party libraries which haven't been mm -hmm. upgraded yet. On the client side, the opposite's true. Like um, you actually, and I would recommend anybody deploying client applications uses the new JavaFX packager which bundles your application code together with the JVM as a native installer. And when you do that, you actually control the Java version that you ship with. And there's no reason that you shouldn't be shipping on the latest JRE, Java 8, whatever it is, because you get the latest security patches, you get performance improvements, you can take advantage of the latest features. And it's a front-end client UI. You can, you can test the features, you can deploy it when you're ready, and you can control the version. Based, based on what you're saying, Oracle takes the same path that Adobe took. Yeah, yeah it's Adobe very, Air, very they, similar. They, they package inside the runtime. Um, no, well, Air was a little bit different. With, with Air, there was an Air runtime that kept getting upgraded on the system that no, was no. separate from the applications. No, eventually they allowed, eventually they did they a allowed to put solution. it inside, right? Okay. So yeah. you don't need to have anything installed outside. Okay, so then it's very similar to that, right? right? The, the JavaFX packager bundles the JRE with it. Right. Um, but you know, if you think about it as a company, if you've tested your application against a certain JRE version and released it, 
the last thing you want is is people upgrade to a new version or they downgrade or they're using an incompatible correct, version. Correct. They should match. It should exactly match what you've tested against. Um, and given the size of hard drives and network speeds and all this stuff, the, the size of the JRE is insignificant. It, it's a significant, maybe now, with the Java 8, which has different packaging profiles yeah, for yeah, the profiles JRE. helps as well. But, I mean, you know, realistically, like, Getting a 30 meg bundle is not a big deal compared to your app size. But you, but but it's only if you are using profile, because the uh, the raw JRE would run like 160 megabytes. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 No, but this isn't. This is the whole JDK. This is just runtime JRE, and then you can downgrade it using compact profiles to exactly what you need, and it's fairly light at the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So I think this has been educational for us and hopefully others. Right. And uh, this is what the unconference is about. It's about having good chats. And, and yeah, it, it goes like this all the time. On the beach, in the water, yeah, these kind of conversations yeah, give you exactly. some ideas. Because, see, on the conference, if it's a formal presentation, I can do this on Google and YouTube. Pro. Do you know how to use Google? Yeah. Yeah, me too. So I can Google and read tons of information. But this conversation is... Uh, you can't. In, yeah, you can be there. It can't happen anywhere else in the world. Yeah, actually, um, I saw Heinz was already booking next year's conference. Oh so yeah. if any any of the listeners um, want to be part of this conference next year, your your time's probably running out. You should tweet 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 Heinz and beg him to come. They need to be on his uh, subscription list, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But Java specialist. I think newsletter. I think the best thing to do is to just yeah, poke him poke him directly now. Yeah, and in, book, in book your air for next year. <laughs> It's gonna cost you. But wow. conference is free. Yeah. Conference is absolutely yeah. free. Yeah, and, and it's a beautiful vacation spot. And for dinner, you're going to be paying like 15 euros, which is nothing, uh, including yeah, yeah, wine. Yeah. The dinners have been wonderful and very cheap. So be there. All right. Thanks very much, Jacob. Yeah, thank you for having me.